Vietnam, it is absolutely freezing outside, but inside it is fire. And that's because this white hot geometric style tile I just installed. If you want to see how I did it, watch along. Roll that intro. Hey, what's up everyone? Nick here from Rad Dad Builds. So in this video, I wanted to show you how I installed this modern geometric style tile in my kitchen. I like to start off every tiling project familiarizing myself with the tile and the tile pattern if there is one. The pattern with these tiles were a huge headache. First things first, I like to mix up some tile adhesive and I normally always just follow the guidelines each brand suggests on the side of the bag. But I don't mix the whole bag up. I normally just split it into quarters and then mix a quarter at a time and then use that quarter because it dries up pretty fast and I hate wasting stuff. simple tile, like a simple like subway or square tile. I would either start um, centering the window and then have equal cuts uh, either side of the window on the sink. Or if that doesn't work out, I have like center of a wall uh, or a section and I have equal cuts at either end. But because this is just so chaotic, it really isn't going to make any difference where I start because I guarantee it, there's going to be a weird cut somewhere along here. So. I'm just going to make a line center between these two pieces of trim and that's where the point of my first triangle is going to go and we'll just see what happens. Oh. As you can see here, I mixed it a little bit too dry. So I went back and just added some water to my mix. And the second time around went on the wall a lot better. When spreading the tile adhesive on the wall, I would always use a square notch tile intro. And when I'm laying adhesive on a wall or a floor, I always like to keep it nice and consistent. And you see the grooves left behind from the tile and trowel in the adhesive? You want to try and keep those running in the same direction. The reason for this is so that air doesn't get trapped behind the tile. It allows it to just run out and escape. That way you get a better suction from the wall to the tile and there's no hollow air bubble spots left behind. You see here that I'm back buttering the tile with the smooth side of my trowel. This just ensures proper adhesive coverage. I'm spacing my tiles at 1 16th of an inch apart using 1 16th of an inch tile spacers. This just ensures that the gaps are equal and even all the way around.
would usually always use a tape measure or a rule to mark my cuts, but because the pattern in this tile is so crazy and the tiles run in so many different directions and the tiles are just covered in angles, it was just easier for me to just kind of sit it in place and eyeball it and mark it. So in this video, I'm going to show you three different ways that I use to cut a tile. And this is probably the cheapest and most common way that you'll see using an angle grinder and a diamond blade. And it's pretty self-explanatory. You just cut along the line and then when you get to a corner, you just kind of nip it away. And like I said before, it was just easier for me to just hold the tile in place and mark it rather than measure it along the angles. This time I'm using a manual tile cutter. These have a small carbide wheel which you score across the line that you've made on your tile. Once you've done that, you basically snap the tile across that mark. This kind of cutter is great for multiple cuts. You see here, especially when I'm tiling down a wall, I use painter's tape to kind of hold the tile in place. This stops any tile from slipping down when there's nothing underneath to support it. A group of cuts like these ones here under the window trim are a perfect time to bring out my wet cutter. Wet cutters come in all different shapes and sizes. This is a pretty basic one, which I think it cost me like a hundred bucks, but they're pretty useful to have, especially on big tiling jobs. It's essentially like a miniature table saw, but you just feel like a little tray of water underneath, and this stops the blade from getting super hot and bits of tile flinging out. There's a fair bit of chip out on these tiles, especially when I cut it on the wet cutter. So I use a tile file, that was a bit of a mouthful, to basically just smooth off the edges. And this is pretty much it for the tiling part of this job. I mean, I'm so glad it was over. Like I could see this pattern when I closed my eyes. When it comes to grouting, you want two clean buckets, one full of water and one empty. In the empty bucket, I like to pour in a little bit of grout at a time. You don't want to mix it all in one go because like the adhesive, it dries quick. I top it up with a little bit of water at a time and mix it until I get a nice cloudy, fluffy, consistent mix. You don't want any bits or lumps or bumps in there and you don't want it too wet. You want it to be able to stick on your trout but not feel dry, if that makes sense. Using a grouting flow, you essentially just push the grout into the gaps between each tile. Usually I like to go diagonally from each tile because this pattern is just 
crazy. It just it doesn't make a difference which direction I lay it in. <laughs> When grouting, I only usually grout in a small section at a time because it, it dries fairly quick. Once I feel happy with that section, I get my clean bucket of water and a clean sponge and I damp the sponge and then rinse it out. I then begin to just wipe off all the excess grout off the tile, cleaning the sponge multiple times throughout. And you want to make sure that the sponge isn't too wet and you want to make sure that you're not taking any of the grout out of the gaps. You're basically just taking it off the face of the tile. I remove any buildup in the corners or around the trim or the countertop with my finger or the square part of the ground and float. Once the grout starts to dry, you'll notice like a faint kind of dusty buildup on the tile. I use a microfiber cloth and just basically buff the tiles off. Also using my finger, I like to smooth off any bits that I've missed. I go over the tile a few more times with a microfiber cloth to really buff off that film residue left behind from the grout. I safely replaced all the old receptacles with new ones and then Basically just had to wait for a couple of days before I could silicone. And there you have it. That's the tiling part of this renovation complete. I'm extremely happy how this geometric tile turned out. I really feel it tied this kitchen together perfectly. So this video is part of my home improvement DIY series. So if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and like and comment and all that kind of jazz. And if you want to see some more day to day stuff, Go check out at Raddad Builds on Instagram. And as always, stay rad. Peace.